You just hear me right now, and right now, God is going to bring up the things that you already know that are not right. That you need to trust. And I hear you say, but preacher, you don't know my situation. But preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. I need this, and I need that. And what happens is, is that all of the while, we open up the door for the enemy to show up with consequences because we would not follow the rules that we knew we needed to follow. I knew the speed limit was 40. Now, if I would have gotten a ticket, thank God I didn't, God is gracious, but if I would have, if I can jump up, God, I can't believe you did it, man, I did it. I can't believe it, that devil, that devil got the speed limit, the devil got in and I lied. I, all right, I knew y'all were going to be shouting me down. But y'all hear me say, I hear you, preacher? All right, go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 is one of these same scriptures I've been going through because it is our responsibility to cooperate with the plan of God. Matthew 6 and verse number 33. Is what it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You gotta repeat after me. Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now here's what I want to tell you. I believe that scripture and I'm teaching that scripture, but I'm going to add something to that. We serve a God who is gracious and kind and forgiving and loving. So that when we don't do what we need to do, that doesn't stop him from doing what he needs to do. Say it. Say it out. Now, this is what you do. Sometimes we have favor at work in our life. Matter of fact, write that word down. Favor. I want you to hold on to it because we're talking about better. And the change is to get the better. The change is needed to get the better. That'd be a good title. Change is necessary for better. But I'm going to add one little twist in it because God doesn't depend upon us to do everything. Sometimes he just chooses to be good to us. Right here, everybody in the whole world can do that. And if you can't go to a tour, and you don't have that, he just decides, I'm just going to take this along the way. He just decides, I'm just going to remove this stuff from you. I know it's so from there, did that up, but the x-ray show did that up, but now it's gone. Now you know God is good. Yeah. Other times, he'll let us walk through it and he'll just protect us all the way. But there are some times where he'll just drop a blessing on you just to let you know. I'm God all by myself. And you can just die and have a little time with other people. You know it. You know it. I got you. You and I know how to deserve this blessing. And I thank you for it. Can we go with it? Yes, sir. Write down the word favor. Favor is this extra that I'm going to tell you about. Because I'm going to give you some things that you and I have to do that are necessary for claim. But one thing you and I don't have control over is favor. Favor is totally God directed. I'm going to give you this example. The first one I thought about. God is just place. Anything, anytime, anywhere. She just hears it and she can just get it. Now, I can play, but I can play like what? And so what happens is that I would be blood and so blood and trying to do what God wants to do because that's not my business. Now, I can buy the rug, but I'm not wrong. There's a favor on that girl's life. Amen. She can 
is doing. And there are things that you can do, and there are other times that God just decides to give you the extra. You didn't deserve the job, you shouldn't have got the promotion, you shouldn't have been the one chosen, but some kind of way God has to do that thing. I hear you talking. Hold on, I hear you talking. I've been working with this. I've been sitting down working with this before. Once I posted it on Peter Jackson, and she was in it, because she developed it herself, and she was shy in the beginning, but she got on all that. This girl went down to Formerville, Formerville, Louisiana. We were at a house show. She had been in so many of them, got last place, and all kinds of stuff. She said, she can make it alone this time. The girl won this. She won the swimming, and she won the talent, and she won the interview, and she won the whole package, and got enough to cover all of her tuition. Oh, that's the matter. Thank you, Jesus. In front of me, really? By two people look like, really? you about favor. Now, I want you to write these down underneath it, because these are the points I want to talk about. Underneath favor, right fight. The good fight. Of faith. Fight. Some people just give up too easy, lazy. Don't want to put any forth effort. Don't want to put time and energy. But you got to fight. you got to get in there, and you got to work at some things. Doesn't come easy. If I want to play, I'm gonna sit there till I learn. I'm gonna call Paul Florida help me out. Pete, what you got on this? Joshua, help me on this one right here. But I don't hear that. And they know me if I don't hear it. Show it to me. Do it about 20 times and let me get it. Because some things take some effort. So don't be lazy. Chat a cash? Going to college? Don't get that and be lazy. Cash doing this. Half doing that there, half. You wasn't raised like that. Go hard and be young. On your job. Don't just do all bad job. So when it's time to get fired, you first one out of the job. And then you know what? You know how we do when they only did pop out of the last. So you lazy is what you want. Show up late, making excuses, hand doing, fight the good fight of faith. We have number three on this list. Number one was what? Faith. I say faith. Number two was fight the good fight of faith. Number three is focus. You got to focus on where you head. Focus. What is ahead of you? What has God told you? Where are you going in the next year? Where are you going in the next five years? Where are you going? Where is God taking you? What's your next step? Focus. But I don't know. Ask God. Yes, sir. Amen. Be told to give wisdom literally. All right. So show you. Focus. Get it. Tune in to what it is that you want God to do. One of the goals that I have is, I'm 60, almost 61, and one of the goals that I have is I'll be 65 in a few years. At 65, I want to make sure that there are some financial obligations that are taken care of. Everybody say focus. Everybody say focus. Can we say what gets me off focus? Sometimes, I'm getting that little toy over the truck of mine. It's old. It'll squeak. It drives good. It looks cool. I don't care what you say. But it's not new. And then I see somebody with a sports car. Driving out there, not good, looking out cool. 
guys and all that and looking good. I saw yesterday, that I saw a guy, people right around, this dude would have to go right around there in all white carpet. And then he tweet right now. Like and he turned it with that. I said, hey, that's a mess right there. I said, I'm getting part of the carpet club. A mess right there. That means we didn't want to go off right there. Yeah. Playing you like that. Playing it on. You didn't even think about that. I'm going to be sitting there back and he's going to go around and say, <laughs> you can never go to hell with me, Dodger. Watch this. But you got to focus on where you are going, not where somebody else is going. That's it. And don't even be hating on him because he got it like that. Amen. We're on number four. Number four is finish what you have started. God started you out, finish it. Take it all the way to the end. If it's not better, I told you, if it's not better, God is not finished with it yet. Because everything that God is involved with is getting what? Say better. Say out, say better. Your man is not right. You sit with it. Amen. Finish it. Whatever it is, speak with it. Follow it all the way and finish it. Because God will make it better. Everybody say better. Yeah. All right, I'm going to show it to you in the, in the scriptures. I got a story I want to show you. I don't run out of time. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 reminds us that there is a renewal that has to happen, the change doesn't start in the way you feel. Five words that I do not like. Five words, Mr. Pastor. If I say, son, can you say that in 20 minutes? I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't feel like it. Really? So what's a feel like this? I don't feel like really same thing. Diane, come here. I don't feel like it. I asked you what you felt like. I said, "Turn it up, please." I'm your pastor. I gotta watch out for your soul, and you're gonna tell me I don't feel like. Amen. 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 Listen, my kids are growing up. I hear some feelings. Listen, man, just tell me, man, girl. I don't want to feel that. Let me help you feel like this. I can help you. How does that feel like this? Is that what I feel? Do you feel like that? Yes. Do you feel like this? Do you feel like this? Can you imagine God saying, I want you to go to the Sunday school. I don't feel like going to the Sunday school. Really? Since y'all got so quiet, I don't feel like going to the church. Really? Y'all don't feel like Really? Don't do everything behind you. Feel. Feel is coming and going. Sometimes you don't feel like it. You get up and start doing it. That guy was working out on my phone yesterday. I was having one of them tired kind of feelings. I ate a little something and I felt like going to sleep. So I said, let me get me a nap and I'm feeling tired. I didn't get home to lay this. I could have made a whole bunch of reasons for it, but I didn't feel like it. And he helped me feel like getting myself up. Because I got him working and he is working and doing this and this. 